What's going on everybody and welcome to another weekly update. And in this video, what I like to do is provide you guys a state of the market and kind of what's going on for the week ahead. So what I typically do is do give the state of the market. Then I give you some upcoming earnings uh, for this week, possibly next week, events for this week, and then my watch list for the week. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, remember to subscribe because I do provide weekly updates and I do do daily updates to keep you guys informed. Now, uh, getting started, uh, we can go ahead and go over everything that I got going on for the week. Uh, as far as upcoming earnings, uh, earnings seasons essentially kicked off. So we did have JPM. They didn't do very hot. BlackRock didn't do very hot uh, on Friday. But now we got uh, some bigger bank plays coming up this week. You got Goldman Sachs. Uh, BAC coming up this week. Uh, some of the biggest, one of the biggest ones I really think everybody should pay attention to is ASML in the chips. TSM, the semiconductor, just had their earnings on Thursday. They destroyed earnings and absolutely tore up uh, in continuation after earnings. Uh, so looking for ASML on Wednesday. I'm looking to play that. Uh, the continuation of that, I think, will will do phenomenal, especially after uh, TSM. And then uh, continue watching chips moving forward. Uh, AMD uh, is coming up as well. Then you also got NVIDIA down the road. We also have Netflix this week. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Netflix, but Netflix is on Thursday this week. And also what is important to start looking at the week ahead as well as start getting that pre-earning run up. So we do have uh, the following week, we have uh, Microsoft on Tuesday, Tesla Wednesday and Apple on Thursday. Not every big tech is announced when their earnings are. Uh, so as soon as I know, I will let you guys know. Events this week, market is closed on Monday uh, to Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And then we have the jobless claims on Thursday. There is other data not really concerning in my mind. Um, there are other events that will come up that I will announce in the daily updates, but I'll ultimately understand this is what I'm looking for in the week. Uh, the value might be a little low because of an off day on Monday. I don't really think so because we're starting to get in earnings mode. And so uh, considering that the market's been really choppy, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth. I think we're going to start seeing more value in this week. We're going to uh, start getting that pump going into earnings. And then for my watch list, I have Tesla, Google, uh, Apple Shop, ASML, and Coin. So, uh, state of the market, SPY. Uh, this past week has been a really interesting week. We had Powell come on uh, hit during his nomination with Congress, or with the Senate, excuse me, and he was uh, talking with them. And he strictly came out, he became his old, the old pal that we knew before last month. Before last month, he came in very hawkish saying that uh, essentially assets and uh, essentially Fed help will start being withdrawn quickly uh, at a rapid pace, uh, much uh, something that was essentially missed before. He admitted that it's not transitory or he didn't want to use the word transitory last month. Uh, he also admitted that uh, stuff might be expedited as far as uh, purchase assets and also looking at rate raises uh, and also said that there might be possibly a lot of different rate raises. He's been very general, uh, very generalized about everything when it comes to everything, essentially stating a lot of uncertainty. And there is a lot of uncertainty with a lot of different things going on, uh, especially the variants. There was a high number of cases, but it doesn't seem to be deadly. But places are locking down. And something I've been talking about through the daily updates is that uh, – China is taking it very seriously, and if they start locking stuff down and affecting supply chains, uh, we could see some really uh, some real big issues this year. I think in the market, even though I'm very very bullish, you have to understand that the Fed is is going. They're not going to move as fast as people think, and unless China does lock down and start affecting the supply chain, I think there would be an emergency rate raise uh, to try to stop. Uh, inflation at that point, but as far as I see it, unless that happens, I don't see, uh, I don't see maybe two rate raises this year. They're saying four. I highly doubt we see even two at this point. 
it really just depends on the state of the market and where we're at. So a lot of people are still not going back to work. Uh, Powell even said that, mentioned that, that he thought they would. And so Tuesday, Powell essentially was the Powell of himself, essentially waiting to see how the market played out. There was no rush. Uh, I know they kept asking him about March. Would, would that be the first rate raise? And he really dodged the question multiple times. Uh, so I don't think March is going to be the time frame. But even being said, March is around that March, end of February time frame is normally when we correct anyway. So I'm sure there'll be some other catalyst that could possibly drive us down and actually have a true correction because last year we didn't even have a true correction. Uh, we got pullbacks. Uh, true correction is at least uh, 12 percent. And we didn't even see that last year. So I think the close we got, the closest we got was a 7 percent uh, pullback. And that was as far as we got. And that was in March of last year. And then the rest of the uh, the rest of the year, we pretty much ran. There was a lot of chop. This year, I expect a lot of chop, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, maybe at some point, we'll get some really hot streaks and start running, like during around earnings. Uh, aside from that, we'll see a lot of this chop and pullback as rate raises are starting to be determined. Once that official rate raise does come, I do expect a pretty heavy correction at that point. Um, and again, this really doesn't... The normal market schedule that we typically see we're not going to see this year because you know your your christmas rallies uh you know leave in july whatever that saying is and come back in august right all those things are going to change because it's all based off of rate raises i think you're going to see a lot of volatility you're going to think see things spike when i don't think you'd normally see things spike um so it's just it's going to be a very strange market going forward volatility would definitely will not go away uh, I think we'll see a lot of chop this year. I think we'll see a lot of uh, a couple of day runners and then chop again. Uh, so you just have to be mindful of that you have to be very patient in a market like this. You cannot force anything because you will get wrecked in a market like this. So being said, uh, the market in general it held today. It's really important that uh, I think SPX holds above that 46.56 come uh, Monday. The market the futures will open on Sunday, so. Ultimately, come Tuesday pre-market, we want the, uh, the market to be above this, essentially that 50-day moving average at 46.60 mark. If we do, uh, we could start getting back into a bull run for the earnings, which I see that happening again in pushing into February. But at that point, I think uh, you really have to be careful because uh, you're going to correct, I think, at some point. I think there'd be a catalyst. Again, we have the Fed at the end of the month on the 26th, I believe. Uh, if they might, they're going to say that they're going to start talking about it more. That's essentially what they referenced to last month in the meeting notes also said that they're, re they're talking about it more. People freaked out about it. Uh, they, all they heard was four rate raises in the market slammed down. Uh, so being said, the market's aware of this stuff, the market's digested this stuff. So they're kind of understanding what's going on a little bit better. Uh, but again, it's still all it's, it's going to take is for Powell to say something off or announce rate raises in the market will correct at that point. And they've been trying to uh, do that, essentially correct, uh, trying to price some of that in, I think, at some point. But uh, as far as Bitcoin is concerned, uh, going forward, if TOS, uh, this is something not just in, in crypto, but in a lot of stocks I'm seeing, all stocks are, they look the same, which is not a good thing. You should have change in your value, should have a change in uh, finances, change in uh, biotech, change in uh, big tech. They should all be different, but everything is looking the same. Uh, again, because of rate raises and the uncertainty, what's going on um, is an issue. And I think it's primarily, it might be primarily due to the fact that uh, China might be cutting uh, supply. So if that does happen, inflation will get way out of hand. There'd be a lot of different things that are, are going to get beyond the point of control. And so we have to see how that plays out. But Bitcoin, again, if inflation is going to spike, uh, Bitcoin is going to run. Uh, and crypto is going to be guided by NFTs, something I kept talking about. NFT market is still very hot, even though we've had this massive <laughs> crash, pullback, correction, whatever you want to call it. Um, crypto is here to stay. So being said, we're still at a good level. Uh, once it does break this wedge, like I think most of the market does break it, which could be a possibly Tuesday, uh, I think, or we may be delayed until the actual Fed uh, come online on the end of, end of the month, and then we'll see what happens there. But 
once this does break, uh, I think Bitcoin's going to make a good run uh, past 70K. And do I see 100K? It really just depends on what the market is. I think the market's too iffy right now for it to just go straight to 100K. I, I think it's got a strong possibility to make all time highs again, but we'll have to see where it lands uh, this year. I know crypto in general, there's a lot of good. Uh, stuff coming down the pipe again mass adoption there's a lot of other different uh, avenues again with nfts in the just the technology in itself that is extremely useful um, in the adoption of that and we're going to see more of that coming in the next year and it's going to snowball uh, moving down the road so being said uh, bitcoin uh, that's why i had coin on my watch list because i really want to see where this goes if coin starts uh, bitcoin goes if you don't trade cryptos hold cryptos a coin is a great a great one for you to do that as well uh so tesla is the first one i got come friday this thing it's been interesting because it's been flirting with this line and if you want to go off of technicals it actually looks like uh tesla may be headed towards the downside it looks like we had a break and a retest now this needs to hold come tuesday just like the market uh if this opens down below 10 38 37 uh come sunday night and come tuesday morning we might be headed down a little bit further uh, going into earnings we still got another week and a half so being said i wouldn't actually be surprised if we pull back down to the 900 uh, i think that's a very solid level that will hold in my opinion uh, doesn't mean it has to but in my opinion it's a very solid uh, hold if not you're going to be driven into this back into this wedge here, uh, which could be interesting. You might see a couple day rattle in here before it breaks out. Uh, so I want to keep Tesla on watch. Again, it's already been proven. It has the numbers on deliveries. Uh, so I'm really watching this again. But if it does break back into this uh, this wedge here, you have to realize you're sitting right on the, the 20 and the 50 at the 1056 and the 1033 mark. Uh, this will probably rattle around a lot. Uh, it may even stay in here until... Uh, closer to earnings and then break out. Uh, so definitely watch this wedge on the daily. Again, it, is a, it has to stay above that. Again, that, uh, that 1047 mark. If not, then um, yeah, we're, we're going to head pull back a little bit further down, I think, at that point. But if Tesla does pull back, that means the whole market's going to come down because right now it's one of the leaders. And that's what we're looking at as the leaders right now. We're not going to deal with other things until the market uh, kind of clears itself up a little bit better. Uh, ASML, TSM, destroyed earnings. ASML, another big one that's going to rip, uh, has earnings on Wednesday, on, thir on um, Wednesday, excuse me. So I'm really watching this one, uh, this key level here at the 730 mark. It did bounce today. If it doesn't hold that, I still got another key level here at uh, seven, or essentially around that 700 mark, that 704 mark is solid. It don't want it breaking below there. You don't want it after that point. If it does break that, that's a 50 weekly. Uh, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, so just so you know, the 20 weekly is up right up here where we got rejected off of. Uh, so we're kind of in between uh, two two hard spots here. We are holding a 200 on uh, the hourly or on the daily, excuse me. And we are holding uh, and the 20 pretty much buttered uh, on the TSM earnings so being said i think earnings comes out i think that we might actually gap up over both these dailies the 20 and the 50 and then at that point we're going back to all-time highs uh for asml again uh its previous highs are sitting at 880 uh, so there's a lot of room to make up here and i think uh earnings you really want to be watching the continuation on this again thursday morning uh where's this at where's it going because i think um uh, it's going to be, it's one of the hottest things right now. Uh, everything is run off of chips. You have to remember that in semiconductors. So to realize this is going to be a huge driver in the next uh, couple of days. So you're actually dealing with the shovel in the gold rush. So understand that. Um, and so the other ones I have, so Tesla ASML, uh, Apple is another big one. Again, you want to stay with ones that are are crushing it in earnings. Uh, one thing I don't like is Apple gets in these patterns where it just kind of bounces back and forth until it actually has earnings. It may not do much, uh, but key levels for this are 180, 168, 
It's a key level to watch, make sure it holds that. You also got this uh, other key level at the 20, the 175 mark. Uh, so it's been kind of rattling back and forth. If we do start breaking out on Tuesday, I uh, look forward to retest the 175. Uh, again, you got kind of a small, a small range here up to the 181, 182 mark. Realize it might ping between there before it actually has earnings the next week. From that point, it might actually break out. The market might, might just break out at that point. Mar market just might go full earnings. It's something you have to be mindful of. Uh, so even though this is a pretty tight, it's not too tight of a range, but Apple will hold very well. If there's a sell-off, uh, Apple is one of the first ones to hold and and not sell off. So that, that is one good thing to, and why to play Apple. So when it's, everything starts selling, you don't get crushed in uh, the quick sell off. Apple normally fights it for the most part as the rest of the market goes down. Uh, Google is another big one I have going into this week. Again, another one that's going to crush earnings. It is taking quite a beating over the past couple of days. It got rejected hard off the 20, off the first attempt. It got rejected normal. Uh, see if it does hold this. It's currently holding this level here. The 27, 27 mark, uh, you want it to hold there. If not, you have this this next level at 26, 78. Uh, but you also have the overhead resistance at uh, 28, 37 and 20, 63. Uh, so you really want to watch those levels. I think uh, once, once Google really starts getting in gear, even like yesterday, it popped over that 20 fast. It was getting ready to hit the 50 and then uh, news came out. And then we just sold off. Everything just sold off from that point. So uh, Google is going to be one of the quicker ones, just like Tesla and Apple is going to recover very fast. These are the stocks you want to be in uh, during this particular period because a lot of the, the mid caps and small caps, um, they'll push for a day and then they just get crushed. And, the, um, and then the rug gets pulled extremely fast and you don't have much time to get out. So being said, uh, if that's what you're doing, if you're investing, that's a different story. Uh, so another one I have is shop shop again. They destroyed black Friday uh, sales. You have to keep that in mind. Now shop has been getting beat down really bad over the past, as you can see over the past, essentially almost the past month um, for December, just continue to get beat down all the way, uh, way down here, almost to one K I uh, want to keep an eye on this to see where this is at. Again, there's a lot of headroom up to the 20, uh, you, which is essentially sitting around that uh, 1250 mark. Uh, and once shop starts getting gas to the upside, it breaks through resistance pretty quickly. Uh, you just have to be patient with it and uh, be mindful of it. But I really like shop going in earnings. The earnings date hasn't come out yet. I know Facebook is the following the first week in February. So being said, I think um, you have to really watch and see what uh, Facebook is going to do. Or I think shop might be around that Facebook time frame um, going into that, that first week of February. So if that's if the whole market starts to move, it did actually start to pump pretty good today uh, on Friday. Had a night, it was one of the first ones to start recovering pretty fast, which is the first time it's really done that. But you have to remember, uh, we got that news and it just it got crushed again. So... Again, you want to watch this uh, 1176 mark as well. I believe that's actually a weekly support I have on here. I don't know if it's a weekly or a monthly. Let me double check here. I don't have the studies on, so that's probably why. Yeah, that's a monthly support. So you really want to watch this 1162 mark. You want shop back above this, so I'd probably wait to the 11.62 mark to think about or consider getting back into shop. It was the first retest on the monthly, and every first retest, you're going to get a huge bounce. Uh, but again, confirmation would be waiting for 11.62, then get entry, and then write it out. Make sure you got some time on these contracts if you're trading options or trading shares. Just uh, get time, especially with options, because uh, you play anything other than that with this choppiness, uh, one strong pullback, some news will come out and essentially wreck uh, a short-term contract very fast. And the last one I got for you guys is Coin. 
Coin overall has just been getting beat down, obviously, with Bitcoin. Again, same pattern. Looking for the break of the wedge. I think once this actually breaks out, uh, you're going to have a lot of resistance to get through. But the nice thing about Coin is it breaks through resistance fast. Just like everything else, it starts catching momentum. Uh, going up if uh, going up seems to be easier to break through some of this uh, momentum, especially when you're down here, essentially in the ditch. Uh, these are the, my favorite plays, and we're getting a lot of these. It's just waiting and timing it till it actually breaks out. Because when you're in the ditch like this, uh, you start catch once it starts catching momentum, it starts breaking resistance pretty fast. So at that point, you essentially sit in contracts that have uh, some length to it, especially when you. If you can catch it on that first attempt to try to break out, that first day where it uh, breaks and retests, they get something with time on it. Uh, it does phenomenal. So kind of really want to watch this, a close one on this and on Bitcoin and see where it goes from that point. So, again, you want to watch that daily break. Uh, could be around that um, 243 mark possibility. Again, you don't want it to break the 223 mark. Uh, 200 has been a solid support as well. Um it did actually come down to the 215 at some point. So I don't really see the market selling off. There's no catalyst to sell us off. Uh, I think the only catalyst that we have, which is kind of floating in the back, is, is the China lockdowns and if it starts affecting supply chain. Aside from that, I don't really see anything else. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. Drop a like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.